after 16. We had six months of one, six months of the other, and they gradually riled everybody up. Late in 1916, most of the interned prisoners are set free. The rest are released the following year. In this emotionally charged atmosphere, Britain's pre-war promise of home rule for Ireland would never be enough. Only full self-determination will suffice. The guarantee of civil liberty, equal rights and opportunities, and the right to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation just as the proclamation of 1916 declared. What Irish people are saying is five days of violence seems to have been more effective than several decades of constitutional agitation at Westminster. The parliamentary election of 1918 brings a landslide victory for Sinn Féin, which rejects home rule in favor of a more uncompromising form of nationalism. One-third of the newly elected Sinn Féin representatives had fought in the 1916 Rising, including rebel leader Eamon de Valera, who wins a seat in East Clare. Significantly, this is the first time in Irish history that women are given the right to vote. In the North, Ulster Unionists are by far the most successful party, adding to the growing tension between Unionists and Nationalists in Ireland. Nineteen eighteen sees the end of the First World War. Thirty thousand Irishmen, Unionist and Nationalist, have lost their lives fighting at the front. Of the men who return, many are dismayed to find Ireland no longer values the sacrifice they and their comrades made in war. In the north, over sixteen thousand former servicemen joined the Ulster Special Constabulary an armed police force raised for counterinsurgency. In the south, thousands joined the Irish Volunteers, now renamed the Irish Republican Army, or IRA. Once again, the country finds itself on a precipice. When you look back at the history of Europe around the time of World War I, really the whole continent was being militarized. And some of the great experiments of modernism by poets and playwrights and philosophers too were getting trumped by the eternal simplifications of the military mind. The poet's revolution is very rapidly replaced by a much more military mechanism. One of the great might have beens about 1916 is how different the Ireland that succeeded 1916 would have been if cultural revolutionaries who were executed in it, like Pierce, like McDonough, like Plunkett, like Casement, had lived. In a sense, when they leave the scene, the people who take over, certainly the Michael Collins type, are very different. The newly victorious Sinn Féin refused to take their seats in Westminster. On January 21st, those members not in prison gather in Dublin's Mansion House. They form their own Irish Parliament called Undoyle and immediately declare themselves the government of the new Irish Republic. After centuries of struggle and discontent, the Irish people have democratically voted for the right to govern themselves. A republic had been proclaimed and there was simply no way that the British government could tolerate a republic on its doorstep. On the same day as the first meeting of the Doyle, fighting erupts in County Tipperary, southwest of Dublin. The IRA, led by Michael Collins, embarks on what would become a three-year war of independence against the British. His ruthless guerrilla tactics are influenced by the failures of the 1916 Rising, 
and succeed in giving the rebels the upper hand against the British. With the 